So the next thing we're going to talk about today is going to be something about uh, trans people in sports, because I'm sure that nobody uh, is tired of that topic. Uh, nobody is upset that the uh, hypotheticals of two-ish years ago uh, that pretty much brought a shit ton of the atheist and skeptic community uh, into conflict with one another, uh, the, the stupid fucking hypotheticals that were brought up then uh, have now manifested into a lot of policy uh, that people are trying to push now. Um, I'm sure that, uh, there's no, nobody at all that could potentially, uh, hold any issue with that, uh, being reality right now. I'm kidding, actually. It's really fucking stupid that we, we have to legitimately have these conversations still about trans people in sports. Trans people should be allowed to play in sports. They're still fucking human beings. Shut the fuck up. Your game is not more important than their identity. Okay, cool. Now that I've poisoned that well, and I've probably lost at least 10 subscribers by that statement alone, because some of you value actual games more than people, because you're fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not because it's not because of stupidity. That's just me being very tired about the subject. Very, very tired about the subject. Uh, but before we get into the subject, of course, as usual, fan art. So from Faustina, we have a cat -cerus. Like this one's this one's literally just a cat. Just a cat, which is fine. It's a cat. Cat. Thank you very much for your fan art submission. As always, you can drop fan art in the fan art section of my Discord. Now let's go ahead and talk about this article here from USA Today. Uh, it's formatted really, really weird. Uh, and I don't know why it's formatted as strangely as it is. But we're going to see if we can't make it to where we can actually see it. Okay, so... As the Arizona legislature considering barring transgender students from girls and women's sports last year, the bill's sponsor zeroed in on the testimony of one high school softball player. Anecdotes, as, as it always tends to. Grace Wagoner had told lawmakers on February 2020 that her team lost its first state tournament game it had played in decades to an opponent with a transgender player. Oh, scary. She blamed an unfair Arizona interscholastic uh, inter association policy that allowed students to join teams consistent with their gender identity after going through a review. Wagoner offered few details on the athlete's impact on the game, but bill sponsor Representative Nancy Bartow accepted it as evidence of the problem in her state. Again, anecdotal evidence is great, isn't it? Isn't it great? Remember how I said that part about being really fucking stupid? Anyway... To quote, I had read stories about this happening in other states, Wagner told lawmakers, but I never expected it would happen at my school. <gasps> oh, shock, horror, oh, terrible, ow. Okay, so what happens uh, when we realize it was all a fucking lie? Because uh, cause apparently it didn't, it didn't happen in in her state there. The, the case, we're, we're going to read about the case now, okay? It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, the game that Wagner referenced in her testimony turned out to be a state tournament play-in game in 2019 that Scottsdale Christian Academy lost to Heritage Academy 16-6. to Wow, you guys got your asses beat. Heritage Academy coach Steve Ladrig said his team did not have a transgender player. Wait. Wait. You're... Let me get this straight. Your team blew so much ass that they got completely swept in a softball game. And so you went through a fucking legal proceeding to say that you lost because somebody on the enemy team was trans. Which I guess to you makes you think that they had fucking superpowers or something. Now, apparently, the superpower trans child on the other team whooped your ass so hard you had to go crying to the state. And then it turns out that there wasn't even a trans player on the team? Boy. Boy, howdy. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it great? Isn't it just fucking great that this, is ha this happens? Imagine being such a sore loser that you had to blame the opposing team on having illegal superpowers. What Wagner didn't say is that she's the daughter of Christian Wagner, 
a general counsel for Alliance Defending Freedom, a conservative legal nonprofit that has pushed transgender sports bans in states across the country. Oh boy. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Can you imagine having that kind of particular bias? Can, 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 can you imagine? Can, can, can you imagine? Uh, who here is familiar with the ADF? Who here is familiar with the ADF? Because, because... Pretty certain that the SPLC had a thing on them as well here. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> We've done this before, uh, but we'll look through it again here real quick. The Alliance Defending Freedom. It was founded by some 30 leaders of the Christian right. The Alliance Defending Freedom is a legal advocacy and training group that has supported the recriminalization of sexual acts between consenting LGBTQ adults in the United States and criminalization abroad. It has defended state-sanctioned sterilization of trans people abroad and has contended that LGBTQ people are more likely to engage in pedophilia and claims that a homosexual agenda will destroy Christianity and society. The ADF also works to develop religious liberty legislation and case law that will allow the denial of goods and services to LGBTQ people on the basis of religion. Since the election of President Trump, the ADF has become one of the most influential groups in the administration's attacks on LGBTQ rights. Now, this is going to be relevant for another video because Ohio's done something real fucking stupid. So you'll have to stay tuned for that one. Right now, we're talking about sportses. We're talking about sports ball. We're talking about some jack off who got their ass beat so hard in a children's softball game that they had to blame someone for, for being trans when they weren't. When pressed for details about that game... Uh, an ADF spokesperson said in the email, <clears throat> The widespread understanding on the team, including the coach, parents, and players, was that the athlete was male. What? Uh, a little game lover, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladrig guesses that the suspicion fell on the team's catcher, his daughter, because she had short hair. What? <laughs> okay. Said Kristen Wagner uh, in the center is general counsel with the Conservative Alliance of uh, Defending Freedom, which is pushing for laws across the nation to ban transgender girls. Okay, so here's our jack off. Here's, here's the jack off for the ADF. I don't care about the article that's up next. I care about the article I'm reading now. So it's disappointing because apparently it's rumors or speculation or excuses that someone has made, Ledrig said. That's not really fair to my athletes. Grace Wagner's story served as a useful example for Bartow, who also cited a lawsuit regarding two transgender track athletes in Connecticut that the ADF filed the day before the Arizona hearing. So let me get this straight. The ADF is so desperate to find evidence of trans people superpowering their way through sports, they're willing to just hear lies. They're willing to just take propaganda and lies instead of actually basing their, their findings on fact. I, I have a question. If you did not like a, a, a marginalized group and you were willing to accept lies about that group um, in order to demonize them and restrict their rights and freedoms, um, I, I'm just curious. Uh, it, what kind of an organization would accept lies about a marginalized group so as to further marginalize them uh and doing so through the legal channels i i can't possibly think of any organization in history uh, that has ever uh, done something like that in any um <clears throat> in any other country uh not even really any european countries i i can't think of of any like world wars that that happened as a result of shit like this i just completely beyond me no idea uh, anyway uh, 
Across the nation, state lawmakers supporting transgender athlete bans have painted a picture that girls' sports team will be overrun by athletes with insurmountable physical advantages. Oh, but a USA Today investigation of the lobbying effort shows that that narrative has been built on vague examples that have been overstated or are untrue, and lawmakers have accepted them as fact with little effort to verify their accuracy. Oh, honey dear. The more than 70 bills lawmakers have offered in at least 36 states would suggest a bigger problem facing girls sports. Uh, but that didn't check out either. Instead, a USA instead USA Today could find few transgender athletes participating and even fewer complaints about them. Uh, Anti-trans sports participation bills introduced in 2021 here. You can hover over a square and you can see uh, all the different bills here. Uh, you can see their names. You can see when they were introduced what state they were introduced in. God, it's like the periodic table of transphobia right here. In South Dakota, a sponsor of a bill said a transgender girl who played basketball was consistently scoring 25 points above females in high school and that the Sioux Falls District alone had three transgender athletes competing in 2019. But the state association responsible for approving participation of transgender athletes said that only one transgender girl has competed since 2013 and she was an average athlete who didn't even live in the area. Fox of Fate, thank you very much for redeeming your... Arara. Because apparently, we need that kind of brain bleach right now, you fucking monster. In Connecticut, the cases of two transgender runners who won 15 state titles has been the primary and often sole example cited by lawmakers around the country. But legislators leave out context that those athletes did not win all of their races and are not competing in college, counter to the claims that the runners took recruiting opportunities from other athletes. So even the case that actually involved trans people is built on lies. Isn't that fucking wonderful? Just, just... In Montana, June Eastwood was portrayed as a threat to women's records after she came out as transgender. But the time she ran on the University of Montana's women cross country team after a year of hormone therapy didn't come close to her time on the men's team, to dominating the competition or to breaking any records. Y yeah, because after a year on hormones, your, your body basically has acceptable levels uh, of, of, of practically everything for you to compete this has been accepted by the fucking olympics administration for years like just arizona's bill is a part of uh, is a is part of a push by conservative political groups to exclude transgender girls and women from participation in sports teams consistent with their gender identity alliance defending freedom has spearheaded the effort filing lawsuits writing model legislation and providing hearing testimony said it is our litigation that has launched people saying, wow, this is going on. I'm going to check into it more, Kristen Wagoner said, and they're seeing it's destroying fair competition. But it, but, 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 but it's not, it's, it, it, it's not, it, it literally, it's not. Literally, the data shows it's not. You would see a broad swath of transgender people competing and dominating, and, and, and yet you don't. Like, the thing we expect to see for your boogeyman to exist, we don't see. And even in the one actual accurate example where we see people dominate, even in the one, you still get information wrong about it because you have to build everything up on fucking lies. I don't get it. I don't actually get it. What is the point? Because it's not protecting sports. I'm sure there are some people, discounting the ones who I pointed out in the beginning of the stream are actually stupid. I'm sure there are some people who have legitimately looked at this problem and said, oh, I need to protect women's sports, despite probably not giving a flying fuck about them until trans people were involved, which, um, yeah, no, that's not a good fucking look for you. Uh, secondly, 
I'm sure there are people who actually did follow women's sports and saw this and thought it would be a problem. Um, but then they did not find out about these trans people dominating sports uh, by being fans of those sports and watching trans people dominate them. No, they probably found out about them because of the efforts of the ADF, which means that the trans people weren't even dominating those sports because the people watching them and caring about them would have already noticed that, and yet they don't. Isn't it, isn't it really weird? How, like, this doesn't seem like a problem at all if we don't have the propaganda from the ADF? Isn't that... Isn't that weird? Does anybody else find that weird? I think it's weird. A majority of states introduced similar bills this, le uh, similar bills this year, and seven have signed them into law, which Christian Wagoner said was a grassroots response to the ADF's Connecticut lawsuit. But in states around the country, ADF pushed the, the bills. Wow. Wow. So she's even lying. Look, those were grassroots efforts inspired by our work. Those bills were actually pushed by our people. These are not the same fucking things. The lack of examples just goes to show that they're grasping at straws here, says Chris Mose. You're a U.S. Uh, triathlete and transgender advocate. There's not a problem, and there's not a problem at the scale they're trying to make it out to be. There's not a problem that would warrant any types of laws against these young people. Their entire argument here is based on myths, misconceptions, and stereotypes, not on anything that's actually happening in our country or around the world. ADF bill sponsors and supporters say their bills are needed to preserve fairness in girls' and women's sports, asserting that transgender girls are males who should compete only on boys' or co-ed teams, that the threat of one girl losing an athletic opportunity justifies the legislation. So, let me ask you this. Uh, if, if anybody who supports the ADF happens to be watching, and the three or four brain cells they have currently desperately trying to repopulate the cranium... Uh, are functioning, then I have a question for you here. Um, if a, a trans woman is a woman, you, you can use male, I don't give a fuck for this argument, Tra if a trans woman is a woman, um, and we agree that the, uh, hormone, uh, the hormone treatment makes it to where they will underperform uh, in men's sports, um, is it not taking away a potential opportunity from the trans woman as well, forcing them to compete in, in men's sports. And also by that logic, should we take uh, women? Um, we, we take, we take trans men, uh, and force them to participate in women's categories. Uh, is that a thing we should do as well? Uh, because we actually see what happens when we do that. Um, we get them dominating those competitions because they're actually taking uh, testosterone. They're actually, uh, moving their bodies into that, that more male category, uh, which means that y you end up just having them dominate in, in places that you don't want them to. It's, it's weird. It's really weird to me because the argument, oh, we're doing this so that a girl doesn't lose an athletic opportunity. Okay, but by this logic, no trans person gets to have an athletic opportunity here. Not in this, not in this realm. In short, if males compete in girls' events after puberty, equally gifted and dedicated female athletes simply can't win, is what the ADF argues. Uh, despite the fact that um, they they do, they do. Like the last time I covered this, it was about a, a girl who actually did compete against trans women and won. Uh, and so the ADF is lying here too. There you go. Yeah, no, I understand DJ Malcontent. We basically just explained their goal. Their goal is literally to make sure that trans people don't get any of these athletic opportunities uh, because they don't like trans people. Supporters of the ban say the policies that allow transgender athletes to compete on girls' teams violate Title IX, the nearly 50-year-old law that bars discrimination on the basis of... Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait! So by not discriminating against trans people, you think it violates Title IX, the one that says that you can't discriminate on the basis of sex? And the, What? Wait, wait, no, that breaks my brain. That breaks my brain. This month, the Department of Education decided that Title IX protects transgender and gay students. Ah, 
Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> the narrative they're focused on, which is we're trying to protect women's sports, directly undermines the existence of transgender people, said Alfonso David, president of the Human Rights Campaign. Yeah, I get emails from that guy. Um, what they're effectively trying to say is, we will refuse to allow you to participate in sports consistent with your identity, because we don't think you actually exist as a trans person. They're not trying to regulate high school sports, because there's not really any problem. Which is the case. And then this, this goes further. This article goes further and further in, but I think we've covered pretty much enough. I, I don't think there's much more in here we desperately need to cover. If you want to cover, if you want to look through the USA Today article, it is available for you to go through as well. Uh, this formatting hurts my brain, though. So yeah, just you know, isn't it isn't it wonderful when the ADF is uh, desperately cleaning its straws that are so vacuous uh, that they are literally having to grab lies and and use the, the lies. Boy. And yeah, 18-Wheel Dragon just pointed out, maybe college should be free so people don't have to compete against each other for a chance for a decent education in future. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't a lot of this just be like, hey, so you're worried about um college opportunities? What if we just had free college education like uh, you know a lot of other countries do, at least for the first four years? Uh, what if we had that? Wouldn't that basically solve that problem? I mean, because then you wouldn't be competing for these athletic opp opportunities for scholarships because you could just, you know, go to college. Just just go and go and do the thing. Yeah. But the ADF wouldn't want that either. It's because they're conservative and, and most conservatives in the country do not support uh, state funded college, um, which leads me to wonder if you won't accept the solution, I have to wonder if the motive has nothing to do with the proposed solution you brought and more to do with the people you're trying to undermine. But, you know. Never look at tulip in the yard. Isn't that, isn't that just, just how that works? 18 Wheel Dragon, thank you very much for the follow. So yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to think or feel or do anything with any of this. I just know that the ADF is proving time and again that they are willing to accept lies in order to push their narrative. And their narrative uh, directly leads to hurting trans people. And so I'm going to argue against it. But with that said, let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of the article and the information and presentation and everything else. I feel like this is one of the more scatterbrained episodes because I'm doing this at four in the morning. But let me know. I'd like to know what you think. Uh, as always, if you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is by looking at the links in the description where I will be able or you'll be able to support the channel if that's something you want to do. Also, you can hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow over on Twitch if you haven't already. And as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here.